Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So today I want to talk about liquid metal and why it's not that great of a thing in my opinion to use on graphics cards. And there's two main reasons basically. The first thing is you're just not gonna see that big of an improvement for graphics cards and the second thing is it's actually pretty dangerous to put liquid metal on graphics cards. So we're gonna go into those things. And I have a couple chips here to compare sizes because that's important for the first thing. And yeah, let's just get right into that. So this right here is a delitted Pentium D830. Um, it's pretty old, but the, the CPU die on this is about the size of what a modern CPU die is. So it is, it will suffice for the um, size comparison. And then here I have just a 1080 Ti. Yeah, this is the one I wasn't able to fix because, um, yeah, the core is probably dead on it. Um, and then here we have the GPU from a GTX 780 and the GPU from a GTX 580, which are just sort of representatives of modern GPU dies that you might want to use liquid metal on. Um, so yeah. So the first thing we want to get into is... Uh, Liquid metal just doesn't work as well on GPUs as it does on CPUs. And the main reason for that is thermal density. So this CPU right here, if I remember correctly, has a TDP of 130 watts. And this GPU right here has, if I remember correctly, a TDP of 250 watts. And then there's a thing because a graphics card is not just the GPU chip in terms of power consumption. There's also the memory on it. So this will probably consume less than 250 watts. Well, all of the 130 watts from the CPU go into the CPU die. So there's already that. And then you see if we compare sizes that, um, yeah, um, the, the GPU die is about three times bigger than the CPU die. And as I've already said, the CPU has 130 watt TDP. This, the, C the GPU has 250 watts, which you have to subtract the watt for example, the memory consumes already. Um, so yeah, so the die is about the GPU is about three times bigger, but does not nearly consume three times more power. Which means that relative for its size, the CPU has a very very high thermal density compared to the GPUs here. Which means that there is more heat concentrated into a smaller space on a CPU than there is on a GPU which means it's harder to extract. Um, so, yeah, because a GPU is big, there's more surface area, and more surface area means it is easier to transfer heat. If you have a smaller surface area, well, you can't transfer as much heat, but you already, like, yeah, because you have such a high thermal density. So, when you use liquid metal, you dramatically, drastically increase the efficiency of thermal transfer. So this relatively small area that has a relatively high amount of heat in it can get can shed its heat a lot more efficiently. Um, whereas on a GPU, because it's just so big and you have less heat density, it's already kind of good at shedding its heat without liquid metal. So they already have one of the reasons why it just doesn't do as much on GPUs because they are just inherently better at thermal transfer than a CPU. And then the next thing is, CPUs come with IHSs. And yes, this also had an IHS on it. The, the Fermi GPUs and older from NVIDIA did come with IHSs, and they ran very, very hot. Um, but yeah, modern graphics cards do not have IHSs, but modern CPUs do. So this one is deleted. There's no IHS on it, on it anymore, but I'm pretty sure you know what it looks like. So that means that CPUs have another layer of thermal transfer because from the die it goes into the IHS into the cooler, whereas on a GPU it just goes from the die into the cooler and that's it. So when you lose liquid metal, um, you give it a lot more efficiency to get from the die into the IHS. So that basically makes it act like there's like 0.5 extra layers of transfer, not like one whole extra layer, if you get what I mean. Um, and also the IHS is much, much bigger than the CPU die, which gets us back to 
more area means more efficient heat transfer. And that's actually something I've seen. So some people run their CPUs direct die, which means they just don't use the IHS. And I've actually seen cases where the direct die CPU was running hotter than a CPU that had an IHS and liquid metal, probably because of that surface area difference. Um, so yeah, so GPUs do not have that extra layer that you can increase the uh, efficiency of thermal transfer in with liquid metal. So that's another reason why it just doesn't work as well on GPUs. Um, so that's that. Another second part is the dangers of liquid metal. Now, um, CPUs that are very popular to use liquid metal on are the um, early Intel 40 nanometer CPUs, so the 6600K to the 8700K, because those were not soldered. Those had thermal paste under the IHS. From the 9900K onwards, and all the Ryzen CPUs are actually soldered, and the solder has a better heat transfer than just normal thermal paste. Um, so those are not as big of a problem to have delidded um, because they're already bad at thermal transfer. Though I've still, I, I think I've seen uh, people still delid the Intel CPUs. Deliding Ryzen is a bit complicated because 3000 and 5000 have more dies, more, more than one die, and they can have slightly different heights, and it makes deliding very, very difficult. Um, but Intel CPUs have monolithic dies, they just have one big die, um, which even if it's soldered, you can just make the solder soft and then remove the IHS, um, are kind of easy to deal it, and people still do it. Because, yeah, the 9900K and the 10900K, they, they run pretty hot. <laughs> um, so yeah, people like to replace the solder with liquid metal, because that's also a bit better than the solder. Um, so yeah. And the thing with those CPUs, I specifically didn't speak of the 11900K or like all the 11th gen CPUs from Intel yet, because there's a difference. So you can see on this CPU that there's some surface mount solder points. Um, there used to be capacitors there, they, they were um, removed because I didn't really pay much attention when deleting this thing because it's just, it, it is very, very old. But basically, um, the 6600K all the way to the 10900K do not have any surface mount devices on this side of the CPU. There is just the die and nothing else. The 11th gen CPUs and all the Ryzen CPUs do have surface mount devices here, which we're gonna get to why that's a problem. Um, but yeah, so if you delete an Intel CPU that's 10, 6th to 10th gen, and I actually, I'm not sure the... I'm not sure about um, 2 to 4th gen Intel, they might have surface mount devices on the front, they might not, um, but I am very very positive that from this, from the 6th to the 10th gen CPUs on Intel, they don't have any devices on the front of the CPU. So that means if you put liquid metal on here, there's nothing it can short up, because what, what liquid metal does conduct electricity, it is metal. Um, so if it touches anything here, you're gonna have a short, and shorts are bad, especially very close to dies where a lot of power goes through. If, if there's a short, some things can melt, they can start to burn. It, it basically, it will kill the hardware. Um, so yeah, so it's very handy that these Intel CPUs do not have any surface mount devices, because liquid metal is very, very hard to apply. It, it is very easy to get it to places where it's not supposed to be. It's, it, it sticks to surfaces, um, and just generally, people tend to put too much liquid metal on, like more than they actually need, and then it squeezes up the sides and then gets all over the place. And it's just very handy that you don't have anything you can accidentally short out on the front of these Intel CPUs. Now, for graphics cards, that's not the case. You see there is little capacitors all the way around the die here. If liquid metal touches just one of these, you're basically done. Um, that would basically be it. Um, you, you, you do not want to have this happen. And then just, just look at this 1080 Ti. There is a lot of little surface mount devices around the core. If any of these 
gets touched by liquid metal, they can get shorted out and you would basically put your hardware at very high risk to die. And that's not even it. Liquid metal is gallium based, which means it dissolves solder. So, even if it just touches one side of these little capacitors here, which won't short it out, it will still dissolve the solder and the contact might break, which can also break your hardware. And then also comes the part where I've already talked about liquid metal sticks to things. It is when you spill liquid metal anywhere on the board here, or on, on any part of this PCB, it is basically impossible to get off. Not even with an ultrasonic cleaner. An ultrasonic cleaner is just going to create a cloud of very, very fine liquid metal drops that get even more places. You can have things go under your BGA array. As you can see on the GPU, there's all these little solder balls and on the memory chips as well. You can kind of see an empty array here. There's all these little solder balls. It can get into there. It can get under, under capacitors, under power stages like here. It is just a nightmare. And yeah, like liquid matter is very, very hard to clean off. And basically when it gets somewhere where it's not supposed to be, you're, you're going to have a very, very bad day. So this is why liquid matter is so dangerous on GPUs. There is a lot of things that if liquid matter touches it, it can cause damage over time or instantly create a very, very big short, which is a very, very dangerous situation for your component. So that's why you don't want to do it. It's uh, also on a side note. So these newer NVIDIA cards, uh, they have shunt resistors. I'm going to look for one that's kind of handy to show. Here's one. So NVIDIA cards have these shunt resistors for their power monitoring. And when you lower the resistance of these, you would effectively extend your power limit. And there was also a popular lose, uh, use for liquid metal to just put a bit of liquid metal on these to effectively lower the resistance because, again, liquid metal conducts electricity. Well, what happened for some people is that these shunts just fell off the card because, again, liquid metal is gallium-based and gallium dissolves solder. So these shunts just fell off the card. Now imagine that liquid metal gets under your GPU chip or under a memory chip or under basically anything that has a BGA array or similar. Yeah, um, it's gonna start slowly eating away at the connections that you have. Uh, if that's not scary, I don't know what is. So it is just very, very dangerous. Like, it is dangerous to put liquid metal, like if if you know what you're doing, it's fine. I've seen people pull it off, but I've seen so many um, GPUs on eBay that just have liquid metal all over them where you just go, no, the, you can't save that. It's just, you just can't save that. I, I've seen too many people put li like have liquid metal spill, not, not know what they're doing, use way too much liquid metal, have it spill somewhere and just kill things. And I am aware you can you can use, for example, nail polish or electrical tape to cover things up so liquid metal won't damage them if it gets there. But um, you can't electrical tape the entire PCB. And I have seen cases where someone put liquid metal on the GPU and then there was liquid metal in the VRM somewhere. It can get that far. It, it, I don't exactly know how, but I've seen it happen, so it can happen. Um, so putting, ele putting electrical tape around the GPU SMDs is not going to help your VRM if liquid metal gets there. So, yeah. And, and that's basically my thoughts. So, liquid metal is just not really worth it for GPUs anyway, because it's not going to help the temperatures as much. And then there's the added effect that it is just very, very dangerous. There's a lot of components around the GPU die that you can short out or have the solder dissolved, either way at the connections. And especially right now where graphics cards are so expensive, I just wouldn't risk it. Like, 5 degrees cooler, which is around what I've heard you can expect on graphics cards when using liquid metal, it's not worth it if you have to pay for another one. 
5 degrees is not gonna do much. So you'd better off investing in, say, better fans, uh, a, a high airflow case, or, or just, if you have enough, go for, go for water cooling. Um, I would not use liquid metal on graphics cards. And that's pretty much it for this video. So, thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, and I think I'm gonna start doing this now, so, yeah, if you haven't already, like, share, subscribe, because I have to say this now for the use, I guess. Um, anyway, so yeah, it would really help the channel out if you would like, share and subscribe, uh, if you haven't already, and until next time, goodbye. Thank you.